everyone, it's Anna here, and today I'm going to be sharing with you my 2023 bullet journal setup. I'll be using this lovely journal from shop Amanda Rach Lee. Amanda is a bullet journalist and artist on YouTube. You can find her channel at Amanda Rach Lee, and she has lots of awesome content there. This journal is from her 2021 collection. So as you'll be able to see, I've already used a little bit of this journal actually. So some of the setup pages have already been done. So I'll just walk you through those setups that I've already created and then we'll make the last half of the pages together. So this is just my name page. These cute little doodles were already printed in the journal. They match what's on the front cover here. And then I just went in with a gold gel pen and added these gold accents just to give it a splash of color. This is my title page to indicate that this is a bullet journal in case I forgot, I guess. And as this hints at, um, I'll be sticking with gold and black as my primary colors for this setup theme and going for kind of a spacey night sky type of vibe. Next, we have my grid spacing page and key. So if you're unfamiliar with a grid spacing layout, there's lots of tutorials online about how to set these up. I'll link one in the description box below by Plant Based Bride. She's another awesome bullet journal artist on YouTube. But basically, this is just here to aid with setting up future spreads. So I've numbered the squares on the top and on the side, so I'm not always counting how many squares there are on a page, and drawn different lines to indicate different ways that you can break down a page. This is really helpful if, for example, I wanted to create a spread that had three columns, I could quickly flip back to this page and see I have a three column option here and another option right here with breaks. If I wanted to go with this layout, I could easily count, okay, each column's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares wide. And that just saves having to do um, the counting and the, the breakdown math every single time. On this side, we have my key, pretty self-explanatory. These are the symbols that I use to track tasks, progress, and events. These are gonna be different from the official bullet journal symbols. You might know that writer Carol was the original creator of the bullet journal system, and he uses a bit of a different set of symbols. These are just my preference. But if you're interested in seeing the OG video from writer Carol on how to set up a bullet journal, I'll link that in the description box as well. I kept the art for these pages really simple, just stuck with the black and gold for the titles and the content and created this black corner just with a black brush pen and went over top of it with a gold gel pen to add those stars. The last of my already set up pages is the index. I just have a column for the page number and the content. Like I mentioned, I've already used a bit of this journal. I kept the setup for this page really simple as well creating this border with a strip of washi tape. It came from this set right here. I believe I got these on Amazon. I love all these patterns and the black and gold together. I think the contrast is really nice. And went with a type writer-esque font and just added some gold star doodles along the top as well. And if you look closely, you can see um, where I either made a mistake or maybe didn't like a line I drew and was able to cover that up with a white gel pen. That's a really handy trick for covering up mistakes and one of the many tactics you'll probably see me use um, for fixing mistakes throughout the journal. And then I just have another two pages for the index just in case I need the space. Now let's get into the first page with some setup. 
So as you might be able to guess, I originally created these pages for my 2022 journal set up. However, I did not end up doing any journaling in 2022 because I got married this year and planning the wedding pretty much took up all of my time. So I thought I would just adapt these pages for 2023. On the right side, I drew this picture of a forest, night sky, and moon. I got this design from a picture on Pinterest. I'm not sure who the original artist was, but I just used this design to draw on a piece of parchment paper and completed it with some cardboard-like paper and some pieces of that same washi tape set. On the left side, we have the greeting for the year. And I'm just gonna come in with some more of the same parchment paper I did this drawing on and write 2023 and just paste that here. For the 2023 title, I'm gonna use the same black Tombow brush pen. It's color N15. As you saw in the journal, when I originally created this spread for 2022, I did the lettering in a blue, and as soon as I drew it, I pretty much automatically did not like the blue there. I didn't think it went with the rest of the setup, and as you'll see, I'm planning on adding some gold stars here, and I just didn't think the gold would pop as much. So now that I'm redoing this for 2023, I'm gonna go back to the black color for the title. And I won't show this on camera for the sake of time, but anytime I create a black or dark color background and plan to go over it with gold, I always double up on drawing the dark color and that really helps the gold pop or if you're going over it with any other lighter gel pen like white or silver as well. Now I'm just adding some gold stars to the letters, kind of the same style as I did in the corner of the key page, um, but this will be inside of the letters. I will paste this in using this handy little tape roller from Amazon. And here we have our 2023 cover pages. Next, we have my year at a glance spread. As I mentioned before, writer Carol was the original founder of the bullet journal system which at its core is basically an organizational system that starts with planning for the year, then each month, then each week and day. Obviously, when you're planning for as large of a time period as a year, you're just listing a very broad overview, which is what this year at a glance page is. And then as you get into smaller time periods like weeks and days, it will be more detailed. I hope that makes sense. If you're new to bullet journaling and you have questions, again, I'll have that original video from writer Carol linked. Bullet journaling has really expanded though to tracking or organizing really anything you want, even outside of monthly or weekly calendars. You'll see later in this video, for example, I use my journal to track a lot of different things like the books I read, I mean, the journal is literally just a bunch of blank pages, so you can really use it in whatever way you want. People online have also really expanded the artistic possibilities, and I personally love using my journal as an excuse to build creativity and art into my normal routine. So getting back to the spread, I used a um, smaller Tombow brush pen to do the title. And then again, I'm using that larger brush pen to do the black corners and going over it with the gel pen. Those black boxes that you see within each of the six columns each represent a month. So I'm adding the titles now in gold over the black and 
As you can see, I created a little Dutch door at the beginning. I just cut out part of that page so that you could flip it and kind of feel like you're in the same spread. And it just makes the whole year at a glance feel a little more cohesive and like you can actually see the whole year at a glance. <laughs> Now I'm adding in the calendars for each month. So this is just a little picture of what the month looks like when it starts and when it ends. And then below each calendar, there's still a good amount of the column left. And that is there to write events, projects, or goals. You can kind of use this space in whatever way you want. I mainly use it for events. so. Probably first thing I'll go into January and add that I have a ski trip planned and a doctor's visit planned, but you can also use the space to write longer term um, goals or projects if you like as well. This next spread is my 2023 goals and tracker. I used this same spread layout for my 2021 journal and really loved it. I like how it's organized and I think it's really usable throughout the year. So I definitely wanted to incorporate it again for this year. For the title, I'm writing 2023 in the same way as the cover page with the black and the gold stars on top, as you'll see. It's just in a smaller size font. And I'm using the same smaller brush pen to do the side titles and I'll add a gold accent to these titles as well. I'm keeping the art design super minimal for this page. I'm just adding some strips of washi tape from that same black and gold set to each corner. As you can see from the titles, the spread is laid out with my goals listed on the left page and different trackers for each individual goal on the right page. I make trackers because this helps break down each goal into either smaller steps or smaller chunks, and just the act of tracking the goal throughout the year serves as a great reminder for it and to keep up with it. Uh, and here's Coco. She just wanted to pop in and say hi and help with the journaling a little bit. <laughs> so we all know how infamous New Year's resolutions are for being abandoned by like the second week of January. So I personally like to use SMART goals um, when setting goals to have a better chance at actually succeeding. You might have heard of these before, but SMART is an acronym that stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time-Based. So for example, saying I want to be healthier isn't actually that helpful in making this goal happen. It's too vague, it doesn't have a set parameter for what healthier even means, and it has no deadline. I'm actually a dietitian by trade, and when I'm setting health goals with my clients, I always have them use the SMART goal framework. And you can definitely use it for all types of goals, not just health related too. Getting back to the spread, I've divided my goals on the left page by life domains, I guess you could call them, faith, health, personal, and professional. I created those sections with a black bar and each title with a gold cursive font on top. Most of my goals have corresponding trackers to go with them on the right page and all the trackers are different. I just created them based on how I thought would be easiest to track progress for each of the goals. 
I'll walk through just a few goals to give you an idea. My health goals, for example, I decided two of my priorities for the year were consistent exercise, emphasis on consistency, and meal planning. Because I know if I meal plan, all those small nutrition decisions over the week will probably be better. So I decided to track exercising and meal planning together on a weekly basis. In the progress column on my tracker page, I drew 52 squares to represent each week and wrote a key to indicate an X means I meal plan that week and a circle means I exercised. Now I'm hoping to exercise more than just once per week, but like I mentioned, the root of this particular goal is just consistency. If I know I have to plan at least one workout to meet my goal, I'm more likely to just go ahead and make plans to be active throughout the whole week as well. I think these weekly goals are broad enough that I can for sure commit to them for the whole year, and they leave room for me to adjust to the current month and week. Like, I don't know exactly what I want to be eating in July at this point, but I do know that a meal plan each week will set me up for success. But getting off my tangent about health goals, feel free to pause the video and take a look at how I chose to track some of my annual goals. If you're looking for ideas or inspiration for setting or tracking some of your own goals. Next is probably what turned out to be my favorite spread of the whole setup. This is my 2023 bookshelf or reading log. I'm mixing the two main fonts I've been using for the title, and later I went in and added a simple gold highlight to the 2023. For this side of the page, I'm creating four columns, the number of the book I'm on, title of the book, date I finished the book, and room to rate each book. I plan on drawing one to five gold stars with my gold gel pen in the rating section, which I think will look really fun. In the future, I'd love to dive deeper into tracking more reading metrics, like type of genre or gender and ethnicity of the author, time period the book was written in, and all that, um, but for this year I'm just keeping it to a simple log. On the right page, I'm creating a bookshelf with 35 books and some little knickknacks or decorations on the shelves too. So my plan is whenever I start a book, I'll also write the title on the spine of one of the books on the shelves, and then I plan to shade it in with a really light brown or beige color when I've completed the book. So at the end of the year, all the books should have titles and be colored in. You might have noticed that one of my annual goals was to read 35 books, so that's why there are 35 drawn and also exactly 35 rows on the left page. So no overachieving on my reading goal for me. If you're wanting to do a similar spread but don't like to do a lot of drawing, you can totally just use the left page here. It holds all the information we're tracking but I just thought the pictures of the bookshelves would be so cute and that it would be fun to write in the titles and color in each of the spines while I was tracking my books throughout the year. For the decorations, I am sticking to our spacey night sky theme. I drew a floating Saturn on the top shelf, kind of like the floating globes you see. Here I'm drawing a little rocket ship statuette and I'm sticking with black and gold for each of the decorations, again, to keep it cohesive with the setup theme. On the third shelf, I created these little strings. One has phases of the moon and one has some stars. And lastly, on the bottom shelf, I am drawing a framed picture of one version of the Columba constellation. Columba means dove in Latin and here specifically represents the dove that informed Noah that the great flood was ending in the Bible. 
the constellation in general represents hope, which I think is a great sentiment for going into a new year. The next spread I'm creating is my annual cleaning schedule. First, I'm doing the title vertically on the outside of either page and using this blue Tombow brush pen. It's color 528 from their Muted palette. I think this attempt at adding some blue went a lot better than when I did my 2022 title last year. This blue color is darker and a lot more muted, which I think helps and it goes with the overall vibe a lot better. On top of the blue, I'm just adding a gold border to all the letters. I'm decorating the corners with those same little strings of stars and moon phases that I drew on the bookshelf in the previous page. When a spread is a little more complex and in setup like this one is, I like to keep the art and doodles to a minimal for time's sake and also to keep the page from being too busy. For some reason, I was really fixated on making this spread circular. I'm not really sure why, maybe subconsciously I wanted a round pattern to break up all the more boxy spread designs. So I created this cleaning schedule wheel. I wish the circles I drew had turned out better. I could have really used some circular stencils here, but I went over the lines a few times to try to help even them out. Next, I'm creating some lines to break down each ring in the circle using the fine tip side of that same blue Tombow pin. And I'm using this beautiful alphabet typewriter font stamp set to stamp the title in each section. The outer ring, which was left whole, will have annual cleaning tasks, things like cleaning the oven or washing windows, things I only do once a year. Please don't judge me if you're supposed to do those things more often than yearly. These are just the tasks that I personally do in our house on the schedule that keeps things clean enough to my liking. The second ring is broken into four sections for quarterly tasks and the innermost circle is 12 wedges for monthly tasks. When thinking about how I wanted to tie this spread in with the space theme, I thought it'd be fun to pretend the circle was almost like a star chart. So for my artistic vision, I threw out my normal key and I'm using empty stars instead of circles for each task. And this is Crookshanks. <laughs> He's our other feline family member coming to help with the journal as well. It felt like too much work to rewrite the monthly tasks 12 times, and I honestly thought it would look really cramped anyways. So in January, I just have a sort of key to match the star symbols to their respective tasks, and then I just redrew the stars under each month, and I think that looks a lot better. Lastly, I'm just filling in all my tasks with a blue ink pen. I wanted to use blue just to um, add another splash of color to the page. And here's the final cleaning schedule spread. Next, we have the last spreads of my 2023 setup. I'm doing the titles with this dark green Tombow brush pen, color 177 from their secondary palette. I thought that adding the blue went well in the previous spread, so I wanted to add some green here, kind of phasing out solely using the black and gold, so it's a smoother transition when I start using other themes and colors for monthly setups to come. So the spread on the left is my plant care tracker for the year, and on the right, I'll have my wish list. 
for the titles on the left I'm using the same font style as the cleaning schedule this time letters in green and still that same gold outline and on the right you'll see me go back to that calligraphy font I've never tracked plant care in my journal before, but I've always wanted to because I'm forever forgetting when I last watered my plants and I want to be better about regularly doing things like fertilizing or dusting and misting leaves. I came up with this tracking system. I have no idea how well it's going to work, so stay tuned throughout the year if I like the usability of the spread. For artistic design, I didn't have a lot of room, so it's pretty minimal. I drew a pothos plant vine in the left corner, and I'll do that same string of stars design in the right corner. I'm also drawing a pothos potted plant in the middle, and I'll outline all of these drawings with a black fine liner pen to make them stand out and be a little more clear. I honestly just went more plant over space theme for these pages. Getting back to the plant tracker, it might be hard to explain because I was not thinking about a voiceover when I was drawing it, but basically for each of my plants, I will have 12 small boxes forming a row across the page and a line underneath each row of boxes where I will write the name of the plant. Each of those 12 boxes is for a month of the year. I labeled the months at the top, that's what the JFMA etc means. And in each box I plan on writing the date that I either watered, fertilized, dusted, rotated, or misted my plants last. Next to the date I'll probably do like a parentheses W to indicate watering or a parentheses R for rotating etc. That way when I'm checking my plants, I can see, oh, I watered and rotated my Monstera on January 15th, so I don't need to, need to rotate it again, but I do need to fertilize this watering. There will be room next to each plant name in that row beneath the boxes, and I plan on using that space to write tasks related to each plant. For instance, I might write that I want to propagate my pileas or I need to repot my peace lily. I can already tell this spread is going to be cramped. I probably could have used two full pages. As you'll see, I did spill into the bottom half of the wishlist page. So we'll see how this goes. I can definitely see this tracker evolving as I figure out what's most useful. The wish list spread on the right page is super simple. I just have some space to write the things I want to buy and I can check them off as I go. For example, one of the first things I'll probably write is a framed canvas set that I've been wanting to get to hang up in our bedroom. And here's the final spreads. And now let's do a final flip through of my full 2023 setup, including the pages I already had and the new pages we did together. I really am so in love with this starry space theme and am overall really happy with how all the spreads turned out. I will try to link most of the supplies I used in the description box below in case you're curious. Let me know if you have any questions or if you're planning on using any of these spreads or similar in your bullet journal. Thank you guys so much for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you want to follow along for more journaling content. Have an awesome day.